Hello, my name is Martin Bloemendal. Welcome to this MOOC on decarbonizing heat supply. We at TU Delft are very excited to welcome you to our online learning community and teach you about this important topic. Because in the energy transition, heat is often forgotten, but it cannot be ignored. In this first video of the MOOC, I will explain to you why we organize this MOOC and what your program will be during this MOOC. Additionally, I will already explain to you what heat and heat transfer is. But let's first start by explaining why decarbonizing heat is such an important topic. You are all here, so I assume I don't need to explain in great detail that we need to move away from using fossil fuels. Greenhouse gases emitted by burning fossil fuels have created unprecedented climate change, resulting in extreme weather condition and jeopardizing life in many places on Earth. To prevent climate change from escalating, we need to stop admitting and even try to capture previously admitted CO2. Another important benefit of moving away from fossil fuels is to reduce dependency on countries that produce fossil fuels and be energy independent. Now, where is our primary energy used for? This pie chart shows slightly simplified figures on where we need our primary energy for. Both industry as well as buildings need most of their energy for heating and cooling purposes. All in all, across the world we need about 50% of our energy for heating and cooling. Please bear in mind that this number may be different for your country. So 50% of all the energy we use is on the one hand dispersed across the billions of existing buildings we have on the planet. These buildings have a wide variety in characteristics, types of use and ownership. While on the other hand, it also sits in complex industrial processes, which have specific requirements for the heat that they need. For example, because they need to produce food or to process metal, to name a few. So when you let this sink in, it's quite an overwhelming and complex challenge to get rid of all the fossil-based heating and cooling we currently use. And that is exactly where this MOOC comes into play. The primary goal of the MOOC Decarbonizing Heat Supply is for you to gain a comprehensive insight into the technologies needed in the sustainable heating and cooling systems and to be able to identify technically feasible and cost-efficient solutions. Therefore, we will provide you with a broad overview of the challenges and solutions for the heat transition. Many solutions already exist to decarbonize heat. And one key element in decarbonizing heat is that we need to make use of local available sources. And the nice thing about that is that it's everywhere around us. We only need to find, find it and make sure that we can utilize it. We can even start with, us, with, our, with ourselves, for example. Every human being is a walking, talking heating device, emitting, emitting roughly 100 to 1000 watts of heat, depending on your level of activity. Now, what does this mean that we are emitting, emitting so many watts? Let's first explain what heat is. Thermal energy and heat are often used interchangeably, but according to thermodynamics, they are different. Thermal energy is the energy contained within a system that is responsible for its temperature. Heat is the flow of thermal energy. So thermal energy is a form of energy that is transferable between objects that have a different temperature. The rate at which heat transfers is measured in watts, or joules per second. This rate depends on the temperature difference, or gradient, and the thermal properties of the involved materials. In this first video, we're not directly diving into detail on thermal properties and complex calculations. But we can use our movie audience here to illustrate some basic principles on thermal energy and heat transfer. Our people watching a movie release about 200 watts per person. Let's say it's an exciting MOOC that they are watching. So in a movie theater with 200 people, the internal heat load by the people sitting will be 40 kilowatts. When 200 people watch a two hour movie, the total amount of heat released during the movie is calculated by multiplying the total heat rate 
or the thermal power with the time they spend in the movie theater. We now have quantified that the amount of heat the climate installation of the movie theater needs to get rid of is almost 300 megajoules of heat at a rate of 40 kilowatts. But that is without considering the internal heat load of the movie equipment and the heat exchange with the outdoor conditions, as this is just a basic calculation to explain the difference between thermal energy and heat transfer. Throughout the MOOC, and more importantly in analyzing and designing sustainable heating and cooling systems, it is crucial to distinguish between the required heating power and the total amount of heat needed over a given period. In this example, the cooling power of 40 kilowatts on the one side and the 300 megajoules of heat per movie on the other. The transfer of heat is key in all our endeavors to supply heating or cooling to buildings and processes. As heat enters or leaves our building or our industrial process undesiredly, we need to add or take out heat to control the required temperature level. In all these processes, the transfer of heat plays a key role. Throughout the MOOC, we will discuss and quantify the four main heat transfer principles. Radiation, heat traveling in the form of visible and non-visible light via electro electromagnetic waves. Conduction, heat traveling through a solid material. Convection, or sometimes called free convection, where heat is transported by a moving fluid or gas. And lastly, advection, or sometimes called forced convection, where the heat is the heat, the heat medium is picked up and moved to another location by external forces. But enough theory for now. All these conce concepts will come back in the coming weeks in more detail. Let's wrap up this video with the outline of the program of the MOOC. In the remainder of this week, we will discuss with you some more basic heat concepts and the broader picture about decarbonization of heat. Where is heating and cooling demand? How is this currently organized, leading up to the explanation of why it is difficult to decarbonize heat supply? And to prevent you from getting depressed, we finalize the weeks with some examples of sustainable heating and cooling systems. The three weeks that follow have a technical focus, where each week is dedicated to a specific theme. In week two, we introduce the sources of sustainable heat we have available, ranging from geothermal, solar and waste heat, all the way to envir environmental sources of heat. In week three, we discuss conversion and storage. Heat is hardly ever available when we need it, nor at the right temperature level. So to utilize available sources, we need storage and conversion technologies. In week four, we show how technologies from week two and three can be combined to make heat supply systems that meet required demand and comfort levels. Heat exchange and hydraulic connections are key in this week. Because the heat transition affects people's own houses and companies' production processes, Many of the implementation challenges in decarbonizing heat supply are of socio-economic nature. Therefore, in week 5 we address economic, policy and behavioral aspects. Finally, in week 6 we have people from industry presenting various examples of how sustainable heating systems have been built in the Netherlands. These examples are inspiration for the final assignment you will be working on to apply the acquired knowledge during this MOOC onto your own case site or building. As this program suggests, this is a broad MOOC, providing you with an overview of what is needed to decarbonize heat supply. As a result, many scientists from the TU Delft contribute to this MOOC. Being the expert in their fields, they are the right persons to teach you. As a result, you will not only see my face, but that of many of my colleagues. And we have TU Delft master students moderating the MOOC. To summarize our learnings, about 50% of the total energy use is needed for heating, which mainly sits in buildings and industry. When analyzing desi and designing heating and cooling systems distinguish between the heating power and the total amount of heat, as well as the four main heat transfer principles. 
And finally, I laid out the program of the MOOC, which aims to provide you a broad overview needed to tackle the heat transition. Thank you for your attention, and I wish you a lot of fun and many great learning experiences during our MOOC.